Hello everyone, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. Vinuta, scientist in Division of Biochemistry, Indian Agricultural Research Institute that is IARI, New Delhi, India. Today I am going to talk about models for enzyme action. The main objective of this module is to understand the mode of action of enzymes. As we all know that each enzyme has its own mode of action which basically depends on specificity of an enzyme towards substrate and the type of substrate, nature of an active site on the enzyme surface and type of small molecules or cofactors which are involved in enzymatic reactions. This module also gives an overview of an different models available to explain enzyme action and we will be discussing on substrate binding to an enzyme. If we see the concept map that is models for enzyme action, it involves various aspects that is first we are going to deal with basics of enzymes and secondly factors affecting the enzyme activity and thirdly different models for enzyme action. Under this third one that is different models of enzyme action, we will be going to discuss lock and key theory, induced fit theory, conformation selection model and concerted and sequential model. Enzymes are remarkable biocatalysts present in the form of protein or RNA which accelerate the biochemical reactions under mild temperature and pressure condition to the extent that almost all the biochemical reactions essentially do not occur in their absence. So let us see the lock and key model. In 1894, Emil Fischer proposed this model and according to this theory, both the enzyme and substrate have fixed conformation that lead to an easy fit where the enzyme represent the lock that is capable of accepting one or few substrate which are represented as keys. The lock and key theory suggests that enzyme active site is complementary to the reaction ground state thereby offering an explanation for the remarkable specificity of enzymes. But the major drawback of lock and key model is bound substrate is transformed to the transition state is completely ignored. At that time the prevailing view was that enzymes were carbohydrates and nothing was known about the active sites. So this theory was remained the accepted theory for 60 years until the hypothesis was modified by Koshland's induced fit hypothesis. So let us see the induced fit hypothesis. Induced fit hypothesis depends on the conformational plasticity of enzymes due to observation that the active site conformation was different between the ligand free and ligand bound states. In this model, the interaction of an enzyme with its substrate resembles the fit of an ant in a glove with a moderately flexible enzyme and fitting a moderately flexible substrate can be considered as an ant. Induced fit hypothesis depends on the substrate which may cause a change in the three dimensional relationship of the active site residues and the changes will be induced by the binding of a substrate while a non substrate will be incapable of inducing these required changes. The third model is conformational selection model. At the end of the first decade of 21st century, just as Dan Koshland's work built upon the earlier studies of Emil Fisher, the modification to the induced fit model has emerged and named it as conformational selection model. In contrast to induced fit hypothesis, this model suggests that the model does not require the binding event to induce the conformational changes in the enzyme, but through a mechanism similar to monod weimann change ox model of cooperativity, binding of the ligand directly to the lock state can occur. The conformational selection model is consistent with the notion of enzyme structures existing as a group of states and that the ligand bound or lock state 
is present in the absence of ligand. However, direct binding of the substrate to the log state in a conformational selection model does not explain why the small substrate would be non-substrate for a reaction if the binding of substrate does not need to induce conformational changes to achieve the final key log complex. Two aspect of molecular recognition is also not explained by the conformational selection model. Number one, the direct binding of the substrate to the log state in a conformational selection model does not explain why the small substrate would be non-substrate for a reaction if the binding of substrate does not need to induce conformational changes to achieve the final key log complex. This we have already discussed in the previous slide. And second one is that binding to active sites of enzymes that through conformational changes are either closed or open in the final key lock state. Concerted or MWC model of cooperativity. MWC model is given by Monod, Wyman and Changeox. Enzyme subunits are arranged in such a way that the conformational change in one of the subunit of an enzyme causes conformational changes in all the other subunits which are physically attached to it. Thus, all subunits must exist in the same conformation. For example, binding of oxygen molecule to one of the subunit of hemoglobin. As you all know that hemoglobin is a tetramer. After binding of oxygen molecule to one of the subunits of hemoglobin causes conformational changes in all the subunit thus brings conformational changes from R state to T state which occurs in one step. If you see in the next slide the figure 5. The T state of hemoglobin is more tense as it is in the deoxyhemoglobin form while the R state of hemoglobin is more relaxed as it is in the oxyhemoglobin form. Sequential model of cooperativity. In this model, binding of ligand causes a conformational change in the subunit to which it is bound. Therefore, this model says that subunits are not connected in such a way that a conformational change in one induces a similar change in the others unlike in concerted model as we have seen in the previous slide. For example, in hemoglobin, oxygen binding causes conformational change from T state to R state in only one of the monomer to which it is bound, whereas unbound monomers remains at T state. Thus, this condition hemoglobin to have R state monomers and T state monomers. In this model, the ligand will change the conformation of the subunit that it is bound to and induce changes in the neighboring subunits. Simply, each binding site influences nearby binding sites until all of the binding sites are in the same state. Neither the sequential model nor the concerted model fully explains the nature of hemoglobin properties from both the models appear in a real system. At the end, to summarize on this module 8, dear students, in this module, we have learnt about different models which explains mode of action of enzymes, substrate binding and mechanism of enzyme activity.